So today's little mini lesson is going to be about physical and chemical changes. You've been talking about this at the bronze level. So if you're here, it's probably because you have a little bit of confusion still. So we're going to try to clear that up. So what's the difference between a physical and a chemical change? So when we talked about properties, we talked about physical properties being something that you could observe with your five senses, and chemical properties describing how something would behave. For physical and chemical changes, it's something about whether the matter is new or the matter is the same. So what's the difference? So matter can change. So you can freeze water and it still ends up being ice. You can cut your hand, you can cut a carrot, and it doesn't stop being your hand, and it doesn't stop being a carrot. Um, you can burn something. Um, you can burn a piece of paper, it turns into ash. Um, you can burn a tree, and a chemical reaction occurs. So there are two types of changes for matter. And that's what we're going to be talking about, because there's physical changes and there are chemical changes. So physical changes are matter changes um, form without becoming something new. So you start and you end with the same thing. So for here um, in the picture, this man is karate chopping a, a couple blocks of wood. So that ends up being a different shape, but not a different substance. So for that, it's something like cutting, uh, freezing, melting, anything that changes the appearance. If it changes something that can be observed with its five sentence, senses, uh, then it's a physical change. So right here, I'm pouring water from a new cup to another. It's, it's changing its form. And then there's even going to be another one here. Here I have a liquid water. And then I can put it in the freezer and turn it into ice. It's still water. It's still made out of H2O. It's still that same compound. It's just in a different form. Uh, the molecules in physical changes, here it shows you the three states of matter, which you'll learn about in module four, which is coming up. Um, so all the molecules are doing here, as we take it from cold to hot to hotter, the molecules are speeding up and spacing out. But the molecules themselves did not change. In chemical changes, however, the matter changes and becomes a new substance. You start with A and you end with B. It's usually irreversible, so you can't change it back. Have you ever been able to unlight a match or unbake uh, a cake? So the examples here are burning, rusting, or milk going sour. If you leave milk for too long in the fridge and you don't drink it, it's not going to unrot. You're going to have to throw out that milk. Um, so here are some examples. So um, when you blast a space shuttle, you make hot gas, soured milk, bacteria form something new in the milk. Um, Alka-Seltzer tablets, if you ever have a stomach ache or take something like this, um, they bubble. So the citric acid in the tablet and the baking soda in them react, both of them, in water. Uh, the Statue of Liberty is made of copper, and that's an orange-brown metal. But this copper is green because of how it's interacted with the air. So the Statue of Liberty was not originally a green statue, but its exposure to the air over time turned the statue green. We won't be able to un-oxidize um, the Statue of Liberty. She will always be green. So here, here's the biggest difference. The molecules in these chemical changes, they actually rearrange. So they don't stay in the same pattern. You don't see two hydrogen and one oxygen in the beginning. You see just hydrogens with just oxygens and then eventually makes water. So in a chemical reaction, there's a change there. Um, so that's actually a great way to think of it. A chemical change tells you about a chemical reaction that you are seeing. A physical change just tells you that something changed form. So in a chemical change, you have your reactants, which are your starting solutions in a reaction. And then those create products, and that's the resulting solution in a reaction. And there are a couple signs of change. So for a physical change, you'll see something that changes size, changes shape, and changes texture. And then in a chemical change, you'll change temperature, color, you'll see bubbles or fizzing, you can see smoke, and you can see smell. These are normally pretty good indicators that these two types of changes have occurred. There's a little bit of a difference because when I put ice out of the freezer, it's going to get warmer to turn to water, but that's still a physical change. Think of that as the shape being more dominant. So there are some ex exceptions to the rule, but otherwise this should be a, give you a pretty good idea of how to figure this out.